The Lockheed U-2 is one of the most storied aircraft of our time. From the heart of the Cold War and the genesis of the Cuban Missile Crisis, the aircraft has earned its spot in history. Its more than 1,000 square feet of wing area delivers it to altitudes higher than 70,000 feet, where it's capable of retrieving high-resolution images in all weather conditions, day or night. First put into service more than 50 years ago, it has since seen service over the Soviet Union, Cuba, and China, and continues to serve in Afghanistan and Iraq. The U-2 is the highest-flying single-engine airplane in service today. Not too long ago, we had an opportunity to chat with an active U-2 pilot. Here are portions of that conversation. Hi, my name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vince Kaddish. I'm a U-2 pilot. This is the U-2S model. It was uh, built in 1986. It's got about 6,000 hours on it, and uh, we use it for high-altitude reconnaissance. If you want to take a look around the cockpit, uh, most of the switches around here have all been integrated into the displays, and so the switches are backups. For instance, this control head right here is a backup radio uh, control head. Normally, I, I control my radios right here, but if that fails, I'll go to the backup. This is the throttle. Right here, this is a, how I operate the speed brake. This is the flap switch right here. Uh, landing gear handle. Right here is my air conditioning panel. Uh, of course, the glass cockpit displays. On the uh, control yoke, this is a microphone for transmitting. And this will put some lift spoilers up to help me get down faster. And here is how I trim the plane. Okay, this is how I transfer fuel from uh, one tank to another to keep the wings balanced or dump my fuel out. This is a navigation computer to control my INS. This is an autopilot panel for flying the airplane above 50,000 feet. This is a camera control panel for taking pictures. Uh, you can see things like shutter velocity and the different modes of the camera and even a frame counter to see how many pictures we've taken. And then this is just a backup nav aid. Aside from that, uh, there's a few power switches here and there, and that's pretty much everything in the cockpit. I like to hand fly the plane, uh, but uh, above 50,000 feet, it's really squirrely, and it's best flown just with the autopilot. If uh, I lose the autopilot and it's not working anymore, I'll actually descend so that the envelope's a little bit bigger. At altitude, it, uh, uh, you, you got a pretty narrow margin of about plus or minus six knots to stall or overspeed. Some missions are six hours long. Some of them, uh, over the Middle East, those missions are probably eight to 10 hours long, but my longest mission is 12 and a half hours. And I've got plenty of missions that lasted a whole 12 hours. I love the uniqueness of it. I love uh, the challenge of flying it. It's a very hard airplane to fly and land, uh, and it uh, doesn't matter how many hours you get in it. Uh, we call it the U-2 Dragon Lady. And because sometimes it's a dance with the lady, and other times it's a big fight with the dragon. You can never get too comfortable in it, or it'll hurt you. The pilots of the U-2 are asked to succeed in an environment few will ever face. They fly in air so cold and thin that exposure to it would not passively bring about their death. It would aggressively kill them. Before each flight, pilots must pre-breathe 100% pure oxygen for an hour to prevent potentially fatal nitrogen buildup in their veins at high altitude. They've been repeatedly asked to fly over hostile countries. Since they began service in the 1950s, at least seven U-2s have been shot down. Many more have fallen victim to accidents. For trips that could last longer than 12 hours, U-2 pilots are asked to fly 14 miles above the Earth, where the dynamics of control mean that three knots faster could cause the aircraft to break apart, and three knots slower could cause it to fall out of the sky. U-2 pilots are often asked to do this in secrecy and alone, without guns and without fear. A product of the Cold War, the U-2 has served America for more than 50 years, with more flexibility than most other options. It's played a key role through much of the country's most dire history, and today the U-2 and its pilots are still going strong.